In the scheduling algorithms we discussed up to now, the decision was based on the arrival uh, time of the processes or their uh, or the length of their uh, CPU bursts. Now, what if in the system we try to decide uh, on the scheduling order based on some other criteria, for example, how important some processes are or how urgent the results are required or how uh, interactive the processes are. We could have different priorities. So now let's have a look at priority scheduling. So a priority is a number, an integer value associated with every process. Uh, so the CPU, in the case of a priority scheduling, will be allocated to the process that has the highest priority. So uh, you can have uh, larger numbers for priority or smaller numbers. It depends uh, on your preference, but we will assume that smaller integer values indicate higher, uh, highest priority. So if the priority is one, that means the highest priority. Now we can have two different approaches again. We can either make the system preemptive or non-preemptive. So uh, actually the question is what happens a very high priority process arrives uh, while another process a process with lower priority is being executed in the CPU. Would you pause that running process and immediately handle the high priority process, which would be the preemptive approach, or say, I'm sorry, you have higher priority, but at the moment I've already scheduled this process into the CPU. So let me finish this. And when I'm done with this process, and when, when it is time to pick a new process for the CPU, then I will consider that high priority process. That is the uh, one of the questions. So that determines whether we are talking about preemptive or non-preemptive priority scheduling. Both are possible. Actually, if you look at uh, shortest job first uh, scheduling, it is actually a kind of uh, priority scheduling uh, algorithm where the priority is just the inverse of the predicted next CPU burst time. If a process has shorter next CPU burst time, it has higher priority. So SCF is actually a special case of priority scheduling. The problem with uh, priority scheduling is what we call starvation. It is possible that uh, for a low priority process, there are always other processes in the system that are ready to execute with higher priority. So that low priority process always gets postponed, postponed, postponed. So it never uh, is uh, can get into the CPU. So we say it will starve to death because it can never execute. That's a, a major uh, prior, uh, problem with priority scheduling. So the solution to that would be aging. That means when a process remains in the system for a long time, actually it gets older, it ages. So you define priority now based on the time a process has been waiting in the system. So as time progresses, the priorities of the processes that are already in the system will be incremented. Therefore, uh, they may not have the chance to go into the CPU when they first arrive. But as they remain in the system, although they started with low priority, they will get higher and higher priority. And at some point, they will get the chance uh, to go to the CPU. So let's look at an example uh, for uh, priority scheduling. Uh, again, we have uh, designed five processes. They all arrive at t equals zero. Uh, they have their given burst times here in the second column. And the last column gives their priorities. This time, pay attention. The burst times are not directly related with their priorities. Priority and burst time here are different. 
because we're not talking about shortest job first. Now, as we said, I can implement this in a non-preemptive manner or preemptive manner. Let's look at the non-preemptive case. So in non-preemptive priority scheduling, since they all arrive at the same time, I will look at all of them. And among these, process P2 has the highest priority, not because of the birth time, because in that case, I could have also considered P4, but because of the priority, I pick P2. So P2 executes, its birth time is only one uh, milliseconds. So it will execute at T equals one. P2 is already completed. So P2 leaves the system. So uh, now we look at the remaining processes. Now P5 has the highest priority. Therefore, we uh, schedule P5 into the CPU, which takes five time units. Note that once P5 goes into the uh, CPU, no one else uh, has higher priority because no one arrives. So when this completes at t equals six, now I have to look at, uh, I have to schedule P1, although it has a long burst, then P3 and finally P4. Now this was the case for the non-preemptive prior to scheduling. What if it was preemptive prior to scheduling? Would anything change? Actually not, because in this example, we assume that they all arrive at the same time. Okay, and we have determined the order according to the priorities by looking at the priorities of all processes. So since no new process arrives, it would be the same. As an exercise, you can, for example, add, relax this assumption and add, for example, some arrival time column here, okay? And make up some uh, arrival times. Let's say uh, they arrive at different times, like this arrives at two, this arrives at zero, have at least one arriving at zero, otherwise you will be just waiting uh, some CPU time. Uh, say uh, this one arrives at one, uh, five, two. I'm just making up the numbers, okay? Just try these and see how different uh, the outcome would be if you consider non-preemptive priority scheduling and pre preemptive priority scheduling.